today I have three Pietra pants from Closet Case Patterns to share with you. One you have already seen has been fixed. The other ones are new and I've done all sorts of different things to them. So it's going to be interesting. Keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and I have a lot of limitless sewing for you today I am sharing with you three Pietra pants from closet case patterns that I have sewn now these fit into two categories UFOs and refashions and I did share some of these projects last week I did share some of these you know non sewn projects I had in my UFO box and there's another one I made that wasn't a UFO that I did make just because you know and I made it in February but I was waiting to have all these completed before I made a video about these three versions. I already have a full detailed pattern review about the Pietra pants from Closet Case Patterns and I did this back in July last year. If you want to have more details about the pattern you can see that video because I'm not going to repeat content you know. <laughs> so I'll put a thumbnail here so you can see how it looks like. You might want to see it if you haven't already because one of the projects there red linen pants I deemed a fail now they were beautifully sewn I have a sort of longer rise and standard and they are described as high-waisted um, but when I got to putting them on and trying them on I found them too high-waisted for my comfort now for other people it might be fine um, other people might enjoy having pants go further than their natural waist up in my case I don't like how that feels on it didn't look terrible, they were totally wearable, but I don't like feeling fabric and things on my torso. Like anything above the waist and my skin is really sensitive to having like fabric there and stuff. So, but even back then I mentioned, you know, would you unpick and, and resize and drop things and change or would you start again? And several of you answered both things, that you would unpick and others says, nah, I'll just get another red linen fabric and start over. In my case, I decided to unpick the whole top of the pants, everything, and resize the top part, drop that rise from the top. So I did do that months ago, and that pair of unpicked pants stayed in my UFO box for months. And now I have it done, but before I show you them, I filmed a little bit of how I did this um, on the top, so you can have a look. This is my front facing. This is the wrong side. I have red interfacing there. <laughs> From the edge, the raw edge, I've just measured three fourths of an inch down and just marked a blue line there and that's what I'm going to trim away from the top and I have the pants here. The back one is the one that looks shorter because there'll be a waistband there and this one here is the front. So I've drawn my line there, drawn there and I'm just going to trim this all off and then just put the waistband on and the facing as per usual, follow all the same of the pattern and my waist is just going to hit a little bit lower where I find it more comfortable for myself and actually at my natural waist. Now what would I do if I made this pattern again? I would do the exact same thing and it's exactly what I've done with the shorts. I've just trimmed from the top. I know the length and the shape of the crotch and that the front and the back fits me fine and I don't want to mess with that. I don't want to mess with that. I just want this to stop. A little lower than what it does you know you'll find lengthened and shortened lines sort of in the mid rise area that you could play with there um, but I don't want to do that with these pants just because they are just straight up and down on the top and you know the, the waist comes in with the elastic on the back um, I don't really think it makes a difference to do it this way although with other types of patterns like jeans and like more fitted patterns I would never do this but I think for this style it works and whatever works, works, you know? Okay, you must be thinking, are these facings going to match the top of the pants? And of course they are because I've made the same change to the facing and the pants. This facing has been drafted to incorporate the same lines as the pants. So where you would have a dart there on the front, that has been transformed into a seam that goes all the way down. And you have that seam there that's shaped 
on the waistband so they match perfectly it's just a little bit lower than than it was so I've pinned that and on the back I have pinned the waistband one of the edges of the waistband was already folded up from the original one and I've just left that original and the difference that I'm gonna do I'm not gonna sew these two seams with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance that's the original seam allowance because when I sewed these on after sewing that I didn't want all that bulk and I trimmed that seam allowance to 3 eighths of an inch and you probably see on the waistband there where the original line was where I pressed it so I'm gonna be sewing these two at 3 eighths of an inch um, because that's the seam allowance I'd done when I trimmed and everything so that's what I'm gonna do there I've just had a freak accident happen with my red pants there's just no way I'm winning with this like I'm talking about five minutes ago linen got crumpled I went up to iron it again I pressed it on the front on the back and somehow a little bottle of Singer machine oil tipped over the front don't ask me how it's just I should keep that oil nowhere accessible and I have these huge stains there on the front I don't know if you're gonna see them but I can see them there it's just like where it dripped you know, oh, so I'm just gonna have to go and soak these in hot water now with dishwasher. This is how they look now. They look the same. I mean, there's nothing different to them. It's just that everything has been sewn lower. So, you know, these pants, when you look at the pattern pieces, you know, the rise, everything's like a rectangle up to the top. There's no shape for the waist or anything because the shaping comes from the back elasticated waistband. So even though there are short and lengthened lines, on the rise of the pants front and back I didn't want to mess with those plus these pants were already made you know and now because I had already trimmed seam allowances on the facing and the waistband when I sewed from 5 8 which is the original to 3 8 I attached the facing back on and the waistband at the back on not with 5 8 but with 3 8 and I even had the little crease lines of where my original stitching was so I just followed those there's the back I didn't top stitch this elastic down because I reused the elastic I had originally and it's a really good quality elastic that doesn't flop and fold inside or anything and I have my nice little facings inside finished with bias binding I didn't stitch in the ditch so you are meant to stitch this in the ditch on the seam and I thought I didn't like that originally when I had my pants sewn like that um, so I just left it dangling loose it is a curved shaped facing inside so it's not going to ride up or pull up or fall out and it's quite deep as well it really stays nicely tucked in there so i didn't really think that was necessary now this might be a little bit too much color for you but i would totally wear this and feel comfortable i'm used to wearing things like this so i have my red pants red sandals and my newly refashioned Sylvia robe and I really like this combination of colors I think it's a happy happy mix I've always made these longer versions not full length so, so this one's cropped above my ankles and I like lengths like this on myself I know it's not for everyone but if I can do it I'll do it because I know I like it and they are so much better now so much more comfortable uh, just I can't say how comfortable they are they fit better at the back, it's just everywhere is so much better. I made the next pair in a fabric that is not really that commonly used. It's a really heavyweight cotton, 100% cotton. I think it feels and behaves like a lightweight denim, in my opinion, the way I can touch it and feel it. Totally non-stretch, not drapey, totally structured. And these pants can work in fabrics like this as well. And it's a printed cotton. I got this piece of cotton in the markets in Bolivia so it's a really old fabric I've been carrying around with me and I always love the green tones if it's got leaves all over the print and I really like that and I had a limited amount of fabric of course this is the same tapered legs view that I made the red ones in and when I cut these ones out I just shaved three quarters of an inch of all the pieces on the top as well <laughs> you know so same adjustment I know it works because I did that with my coral leaf print shorts I made last year have a picture there 
So if you want to know more about that, you can see the video last year. But that was the adjustment I figured out I needed for the waist to heat at my natural waist. So that's how I cut these out as well. You know, the lengthen and shorten lines the pattern has there, I did not want to mess with that. I don't want to mess with the shape or anything down there because I know that fits me. And all I didn't like was that the fabric came up too high. That's all. I wanted to lower it. And the shape of that doesn't matter because it's a rectangle and that comes in with the elastic, as I said before. So that's what I did there. I made the pockets inside with the main fabric. The whole pocket piece, I was able to get it out. Um, but if you notice, they are quite more cropped than the red ones. So these hit sort of high shin area. And it's a style I like. I would call these capri length. I like that length on myself. And because the leg is tapered, it's not a straight leg. It's not just about chopping it and then hemming it. So I did have to true the pattern pieces at the bottom to match what I wanted and I'm going to share with you how I did that now. This is one of the bottoms of the legs and you can see that the hem is trued. So you have one fold at 3 8 and then another fold at an inch. And that's how the hem has been designed and you can see the shapes at the bottom are perfect. Now I wanted my pants to be shorter than the pant so it could fit my fabric. <laughs> So from the bottom, I drew the line where I wanted my finished length to be, right there. And then from there, I added an inch, and from there, another 3 8 And these, these red lines are to mimic the way this was designed, right? But I can't just chop it there. I have to true the sides so that they take the same shape as this hem is going to take. So I don't want to cut this off and get rid of it, so I'm just going to fold that away there for now. And I added some paper here. I just stuck on a piece of paper with tape. I did the same on this other side. And then I just went ahead and folded this like the hem's gonna be, the first fold, and then the second fold. And then I had excess paper there, and then I just trimmed that there, trimmed it there. And now when I open this, I have my new length and the shape that it needs to have on the bottom so that I won't have pockets there when I fold this. And I've done this to all the bottoms of the legs. This is the bottom of the back. It's much wider, that's why you can't see it that much. But you can see where I folded, added the paper, folded again, cut it and then got the shape there and the shape there. So really simple, you know, I just tried to mimic the same, you know, hem allowances. The first fold at 3 8 the second fold at an inch. It's just that the shape has to be wonky on the sides for it to match what it's actually going to be like when you've got it sewn and folded. So there is my hem and it's super neat, like there's no puckers or anything, you know, what you want to achieve is that the top part of the hem is the same length as the area of the pants where you're going to sew it so you have a tapered leg and when you fold it up the hem has to go wider on the top to match that shape going down so I think that's really important to consider when you want to change the hem lengths on uh, items of, of clothing that are straight rectangles you know if this was a straight leg I could just cut and hem right but if there's a taper thing going on or if there's something flared going on, you need to adjust the shape of that hem and true it as if it was sewn with the paper like I showed you and then you get really nice results. This is super comfortable, super comfortable. I can't tell you how nice this fabric is. It feels amazing on, super nice and fresh for this weather. And yeah, I'm gonna show you how these look. This is how these ones look. These are the tapered leg, but just shorter to match the amount of fabric I had. I like this length on me. It's always a length I've enjoyed. And I've got my basic black top tucked in so you can see where this reaches at my natural waist. I think this is super comfortable. So I'll just untuck that because my preference is to be untucked always. <laughs> You can see that that's where my waist is and that's where my pants are the originals were three quarters of an inch higher and i really felt that on my like torso i felt the fabric there when i sat down it was super uncomfortable inside here there's that facing that gives really nice tummy support and pockets i would never use you know at the back there's the elastic there super comfortable 
and I'm happy with these. third one I showed you a little crumpled pile of fabric that I had ready to make and I cut these pair of shorts out at the same time I cut out the green ones I made in February and this fabric is really special because it's thrifted fabric as such I'm going to put a picture here of the original dress it was a quite a childish looking dress with like childish type embroidery on the bodice it was a very small size it had a huge gathered denim skirt you know so when I saw this at the thrift shop in Chile this summer I immediately saw this as potential denim fabric the, the feel of the fabric is so nice it's lightweight denim the wash is beautiful it's really soft and I could imagine a skirt or pants made from all that skirt back then so I just cut out the bodice brought the skirt with me, left the bodice at my mum's because it's pretty useless, it's really tiny. And I did everything I had to do in order to get the shorts with this amount of skirt. Now the shorts, I'd already adjusted the length. The original short length is really short. It has a really short inseam and I had lengthened mine by about six inches already. If you want to know how I did that, go back to last year's video because I was very detailed in showing how I modified the pattern pieces to lengthen them while keeping the grain line stable. I used my pattern pieces and I had to take one, well, maybe two creative um, decisions. One was to chop my back leg into two and have a seam on the center of the back leg. It was the only way that all these pieces were gonna fit onto the skirt. I also pieced the pockets into two. So there's an area out of main fabric that I cut on the cross grain. <laughs> and then there's a lining pocket underneath to save fabric. And that's how I got this to happen. I also cut the facing pieces that go across the front on the cross grain. Now, I don't really think that matters with denim. It doesn't matter. Like it, it's not gonna make any big difference. I did keep the leg pieces all that nicely placed on the grain of course so i filmed it for you um how i had this denim how i placed it all the changes i made and especially how i managed to piece the pocket into two so that i could get this out because the the, the pocket piece is humongous so you know if you don't have fabric or if you think that your fabric is too thick and you would like some lining pocket fabric in there instead, this could be super useful, so have a look. You see a large chunk of denim here, but this was actually a dress. You can see the hem, I've actually unstitched that and pressed it open because I need every bit of length of this. And you can see that originally it had buttons down the center. And on the top you can see where it used to be gathered because you know the fading of the denim is sort of evident there. So this was a gathered skirt that went onto a very small bodice, sort of like a teenager size. It was very small. There's no way I could even get half of myself in there. But the skirt was super gathered into that bodice. So it's I've got quite a chunk of fabric here. And I'm going to turn it, you know, the other way around and play with pattern pieces to see what can come of it. The fabric is so soft and so nice. And it's a lightweight denim. I think would be perfect for these shorts. After a lot of manipulation, I was able to get all the pattern pieces onto my skirt piece. The seams there, the side seams of the skirt are right there if you can see them. This is quite a rectangle, you know, I've got fabric on the fold over there and that's a reference to mark the grain lines that are marked on the pattern so I'm not placing anything wrong. And I've chopped my back leg into two and those are the two pieces there. That line there is the one that goes next to that one. And because I cut it on the grain line, I made sure to place the edges there right on the grain line. And when I cut, I'm going to leave 3 8 seam allowance there and there so I can put these back together like normal. That's the only change. And this is the front center leg, the lateral front leg, facing piece, facing piece, waistband. I'm going to have to have a center seam on the back waistband, but that doesn't really matter. This is the top piece of the pocket that will actually be seen behind the lateral front leg. And this is actually what I'm going to cut from lining fabric and have a seam there. But that's all going to be hidden inside and no one is going to see it. So I'm super happy I'm going to get a pair of shorts from this skirt. Here you can see how I divided my back 
piece into two and I've added 3 8 seam allowance there to the fabric. I didn't modify the pattern pieces because I will be sticking this back together. I just chose the grain line mark so where the arrow was going up and down that's where I just cut up and down and then when I cut my pieces I made sure that this was on the grain line as well. It won't affect the feet or anything I'll just have an extra seam at the back and it was the only way to get this width onto the skirt pieces. Um, it wouldn't have fit otherwise because of all that extension there on the crotch. Then I can take extra seams and I'm never against adding a seam. This is the pocket piece for view C and those are the shorts. But the same can apply for the pants. It's the same concept. So when you look at the labeling on the pattern piece, you'll see it says waist seam up there on the top. And here at the bottom it will say pocket seam. So basically this area is the one that's going to be seen because the lateral front piece is going to start around there and that will be behind it. So the top area needs to be from the main fabric. But this is huge. This pocket bag that goes inside doesn't really have to be from the main fabric and especially if you don't have enough. Like I'm fine if I have enough I'll cut it but I'm making these shorts out of a thrifted denim skirt and I have minimal fabric. On the pocket here there is a line across that says fold line and that's how the pocket is going to be folded inside and you can see that this line to be is actually going to be sewn inside it's going to be inside okay so that's the shape the pocket's going to have and all this has to be the main fabric there so anything that goes under here is not going to be seen okay so considering that and just looking behind there lengthen and shorten line and I've made two lines here one one inch further up from the lengthen and shorten line and one two inches up from the shorten and lengthen line so depending on the amount of fabric you have you know you could fold away whatever amount you want but this one here the highest one will make this top piece smaller and that's what I needed for these shorts so for this example, from the lengthen and shorten line, there's a line across two inches above from there. You know, very straight. And I've done a notch mark there for myself, a single one and a double one, just so I can match the main piece to the lining fabric without getting confused. Okay, so this top one will be of the main fabric and this bottom one will be out of a cotton or another type of woven lining fabric. So you can see the top part of the pocket has already been cut out of the denim. You can see I've left 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance at the bottom right there. And now from this bottom bit of the pocket, I'm going to cut it from lining fabric and leave 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance there on the top. I have cut the bottom piece of my lining fabric. It's just a cotton with stripes and I've left the seam allowance there, the same as I did with the main fabric right there. I have drawn my double notch there and my single notch there so I can piece these together easily without getting confused because the shape there is not really that different. Imagine I went and sewed them the other way around. So that's just something to remind myself to piece it together properly. Now the bottom here, of the pocket it says pocket seam there and that's where you're supposed to fuse on interfacing the same as you would if this pocket was just one piece there and then there's this interfacing piece that needs to be fused on right there this is the cheetah's pocket the one that takes less fabric and remember i drew a double notch there and a single notch there just to help me match it up with the correct one from the lining piece you can see my single notch there and my double notch there and I've made sure to match those together, right sides together and I did leave 3 8 of a seam allowance on both of these pieces there and so I'm just going to sew those together and I will have a completed pocket I will treat it as one piece, I'll forget that there's an extra seam there of course I'll serge that and press it and I'll do the same with the other side I'll have two pocket pieces that are just like the other ones they're just made with this fabric you can see this is interfaced there this red line here is the one that marks the fold line or where this is going to be folded up afterwards so it's just 
a sneaky little way to use less fabric with this humongous pocket piece. These are my shorts. I did top stitching there on the pockets with brown thread. I also top stitched the seam on the leg on the front to highlight the features. I think when you're working with denim or a solid, top stitching can always be a bonus because it will just make the features look nicer. You know, so that's the front there. There is my hem and at the back, it's getting really windy. I hope you can't hear wind. At the back, I did top stitch down the elastic with the same brown top stitching thread I was using. And you can see there the seam that goes down the back of the leg is also top stitched. Super nice, they feel amazing on. I'm gonna turn these inside out so you can see um, what I've done inside with the pockets a little bit. I think it's gonna start raining, I better hurry up. It got really dark, suddenly the sky is black. I'm gonna try and show you. Um, but yeah, I better hurry up. <laughs> Uh, this is the facing inside. I also opted to leave the facing loose. I didn't stitch in the ditch. And look, you can see in this area where the hem was of the original skirt, like the fading bits there. And these pieces are cut on the cross grain, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I used this fun bias binding that I made myself to make that look cool inside. No one's gonna see it. Here you can see where I used main fabric for the top part of the pocket and then lining fabric starts under there and no one's gonna ever see it. The cotton feels really nice against the skin and I think it's less bulky and saves fabric. So two benefits, less bulky, less fabric, I'll take it. And I think when I make more of these pants, I'm always gonna do it like this. I have no interest in wasting main fabric uh, with pocket pieces that are not gonna be seen. Um, especially if I'm using nice fabric like linen, you know, I, I don't want to do that anymore. I did that with the red ones and with the green ones, but I wouldn't do it anymore knowing I can do this. So this pocket, when you look, the part that's attached on the back is the lining fabric, uh, but that's understitched and everything, so no one's going to see it. And when you put your hand inside, no one's going to see it either because the lining fabric starts way below where the pocket entrance is. So I think that's really cool. Have a look at how these fit. These are the shorts, lengthened to how I like it, just above the knee. So I did do some top stitching there with brown thread, just so that the seams could pop. And I think I would always do that with denim, same as the pockets here have been top stitched. Now the back, you might see that center seam there that I added so I could get my pattern pieces there. I really like them, they're so comfortable. And I mean, I would just wear them like that, untucked always. But I wanted to show you how they fit at the back. I know, this, this is just the right waist height for me at my natural waist, it's super comfortable. When I started this video, I had sun in my face. You probably see the, the color changes, the lighting. Um, you know, I'm filming in natural light, got really dark. Three new pants, I love them. I am so happy I have them. They are all super comfortable, super nice fabrics to wear, and I'm gonna really enjoy having them. I'm super happy I got my UFO done and my refashion done. <laughs> <laughs> very successful and satisfying makes and I'm extremely happy with them I would recommend this pattern it's a very nice pattern to sew up the little things that you might need I mean my adjustments are minimal it's just dropping that waistline a little bit on the top that's it very easy to adjust I think easier than other pants and it's got to do with having the flat front elasticated waist that type of pant I think is always easier to fit than the ones that are fitted fitted you know at the waist and hips so have a go at this pattern, I really like it. I think I'm definitely making it again. I haven't tried the wide leg version. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like, subscribe to this channel, and I will head back inside before I start getting wet. Happy sewing, bye.